Hey YouTube, so I'm vlogging now. I don't know, I think I'm just bored. Probably nothing will come of it, but we'll see. It's kind of a ghetto operation right now. I'm using a vacuum cleaner as a tripod. Now today I want to talk about an issue that I've seen a lot of lately, and that's the issue of people being offended. Now, a lot of people would probably open a video like this by saying something like, Hey guys, before I begin, I just want to say that this video features some strong language, so if that offends you, maybe this isn't the video for you, you might want to turn it off. But I'm not, nor will I ever, make a video that opens like that. Why? Because fuck you, that's why! When did it become my job to control your emotions? Because that's what being offended is. The state of letting yourself be upset by somebody else. And that would be fine if you were getting upset about important things, but no. Something about Americans, we get mad at the stupidest shit. Like swearing or Kristen Stewart's love life. Well, what you call puritanism, I call having basic moral values. Congratulations! That's great that you have a sense of moral code. No, really. I'm glad that you at least give a shit about you and your family being decent people. Because nobody wants more of these assholes. The problem is when you try and take your personal sense of morality and apply it onto other people as the law of the land. There is nothing more subjective in this world than the concept of good and evil. And to feel victimized and to be pissed off because I don't share your personal sense of morality is so fucking stupid it hurts. I mean. Can you imagine if we applied that idea to other areas of our life? Mm. Oh shit, man. Ugh. I just ruined your diet, didn't I? Oh my god, I shouldn't be smoking. Your teeth are yellowing as we speak. Our non-traditional marriage destroys the sanctity of yours? Why didn't you say so? I guess that last one actually happens. Americans are retarded. But seriously, why? Do you want to know what offends me? This shit. Not the fact that Eminem rapped about killing a stripper, or that the guy from Seinfeld is a failed comedian. But what about the children? What the fuck about them? Are you afraid that my godless heathenism is going to corrupt their souls? Look at all these fucks I give! I really don't know how we as a society develop such an overwhelming sense of self-righteousness, but let me make it very clear. You do not have the right to not be offended. And I do not have the responsibility of parenting your child. If you don't like what your children are seeing on TV, turn off the fucking television. Or better yet, in my opinion, don't have an idiotic prohibitionist stance with your child and encourage them to use critical thinking. Now, in fairness, I don't have children of my own, but as a young person, I can tell you what I've found works and doesn't work when it comes to parenting. See, if and when I do have kids, I'm not going to tell them, don't cuss. I'm going to tell them, you shouldn't cuss in X situations, and this is why. The stove is hot is a hell of a lot better of a deterrent than don't touch the stove. Some of the most deranged delinquents I know grew up in families where the thought process rarely extended beyond for the Bible tells me so. They grew up in authoritarianism instead of being told to embrace logic and reason, and they grew up to be resentful because of it. And what's your grand scheme here anyways? To shield your child from every little thing you find reprehensible? To make them woefully unprepared for the real world? That should work out wonderfully. It's worked so well in schools with abstinence teaching. Oh wait, that's the exact opposite of what works. Have you ever heard the saying, you catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar? Well, you sway more people with calm and collected reason than you do with being a judgmental dick. Don't get me wrong, there's a time and place for everything. So why aren't we teaching our kids about the proper time and place? I'm not gonna go into jury duty screaming fuck the police any more than I'm gonna go to a wedding singing you give love a bad name. But in the off chance that I do do that, who the hell are you to impose that I can't? Unless I'm hurting somebody. And I mean actually hurting, not quit oppressing my beliefs kind of hurting. Then I should be able to do whatever the hell I want 
And you should be an adult and learn how to compartmentalize that instead of crying to your senator. Worst case scenario, I make an ass out of myself, but how is that your problem? Don't talk to me. And I'm not just saying this because I long for a day where I can buy my liquor, weed, and porn at the same place. <laughs> Although, I do long for that day. No, there's a very important reason why you should lighten up. Because, historically speaking, when we let Puritan groups take control, everything starts to suck. The most obvious example of this is, of course, the Dark Ages, which set back humanity technologically almost a thousand years. I was promised hoverboards by 2015, goddammit, and that just doesn't seem like it's going to happen now. But it manifests itself in more subtle ways all the time. The MPAA currently holds a creative monopoly over one of America's biggest exports, Hollywood. In the movie, this film has not yet been rated, which I highly recommend, by the way. It's on Netflix. Everyone should check it out. Director Kirby Dick investigated the MPAA's board. Now, the board is usually kept anonymous. But as of 2005, the board consisted entirely of white conservative people over the age of 45, all of whom were married with children. In other words, every single thing you're allowed to see in movie theaters has to be approved by a panel with absolutely no diversity whatsoever. <laughs> of course, the MPAA can't ban movies, that would be un-American. No. What they do is give your movie an X rating. An X rated movie in this day and age will never see the light of day because major studios cannot market something which society has branded to be common porn. So, the director is then given two choices. He can either not release his movie in theaters and thereby make no money on it whatsoever, or he can butcher his creative vision and edit the hell out of it until some 45-year-old white conservative man deems it unoffensive. Even an R rating can mean the death sentence for a lot of movies. Did you ever wonder why Ghost Rider sucked? It was because they weren't making a Ghost Rider movie. They were making a PG-13 Ghost Rider movie. They had to make sure that they could market it to children. So they shit all over the intellectual property and then put Nicolas Cage in it, presumably because at that point they were just like, fuck it. And while that's annoying, it's even worse when they do it to important films. The film Bully, which is a groundbreaking documentary attempting to show the gritty reality of bullying in our school system, had to famously fight to get its R rating removed so that the actual constituency of the film, high school children, would be able to see it. That's right. A film that could have potentially saved the lives of tormented youths had to struggle to come into existence because a couple of people are too immature to handle hearing the word faggot. The exact same story can be said of the FCC and the ESRB. It is fucking ridiculous that we live in a world where saying one of seven naughty words can take an entire program and all of the jobs that go along with it off the air overnight. And you see this right here? This is a comic published in 1961, back when comics had to adhere to the Comics Code Authority, an idea presumably thought up by soccer moms who really had nothing better to do while the kids were at school. Notice how it's fucking terrible? That's because, under the Comics Code Authority, violence was not allowed to be depicted, along with a laundry list of other things. As a result, the entire industry became incredibly lame. Sales started to plummet and it almost tanked the entire industry. Same thing happened to video games in the late 80s. That's right, we could have been reading this, but instead we had to suffer through 30 years of this. And don't get me wrong, I don't hate Silver Age comics because they're not gritty. I hate them because after we cut that shit off, these stories started to involve real issues and real human emotions. They stopped being schlock and became actual pieces of art. Think Adam West versus The Dark Knight. It's censorship under the guise of morality. And as Americans, we should always be pissed off about censorship for our own sake. My point is this. When you let yourself get all riled up by something you find unsavory and then you write to your local news media or you file a frivolous lawsuit, all you're doing is hurting your own culture and your own society. 
Not to mention making yourself stupider by blocking out opposing ideas. You are preventing intellectual growth and crippling the evolution of the arts. At best, this is very annoying, and at worst, it prevents me from owning a hoverboard. I mean, it costs lives. So here's what I want you to do. The next time you see something on TV or the internet that really rubs you the wrong way, I want you to clench your fist, stand up, march down the hallway, and go outside. And if I'm just way too crass for your virgin ears, do us all a favor and just don't talk to me. Chances are I don't want to be friends with someone who's in their 30s and still throws temper tantrums when things don't go their way anyways. And to anyone who's in the arts, never stop pushing boundaries. It is both your job and your obligation to question the status quo and to get people to think. Never stop doing it and never apologize for it. Well, that's all well and good, but it doesn't matter how smart you are because when you swear every other word like you do, it just makes you sound super unintelligent. Well said, condescending douchebag. Well said. Hey look, a red herring!